Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Today we will talk about a very important topic of DST, and that is called androgen insensitivity syndrome. And what is the definition of androgen insensitivity syndrome? It is a condition in which a person who is genetically male, means the one having X and Y chromosome, is resistant to male hormones called androgens. As a result, the person has some of the physical traits of a woman, but the genetic makeup of a man. What are the other names of androgen insensitivity syndrome? Previously, this condition was called the testicular feminization syndrome due to erroneous assumption that the testes must be producing feminizing factor. AIS is also called the Morris syndrome. What is the incidence of androgen insensitivity syndrome? It is a rare condition. By rare, we means it is present in one in thousand to one in ten thousand people. Means a person in a small town. What is the karyotype and phenotype of androgen insensitivity syndrome? The karyotype of AIS is XY. The phenotype of AIS is female. What is the etiology of androgen insensitivity syndrome? This condition occurs due to complete inability of the body to respond to androgens. On the X chromosome, we have two arms, short arm and the long arm. The cause of AIS is a disruption of androgen receptor gene on the long arm of X chromosome. So, in AIS, there is loss of androgen receptor. What is the pathophysiology of androgen insensitivity syndrome? In this condition, an XY fetus proceeds initially down the pathway of male fetal sexual determination. The SRY gene located at the short arm of Y chromosome leads to a normal testicular development and both AMH and testosterone are normally produced. The AMH ensures the regression of Mullerian ducts and the testosterone plays a role in the male genital organs formation. However, due to lack of ability of all the body cells to respond to androgens, female external genitalia develop and the condition called AIS or Morris syndrome develops. Now, what are the clinical features of androgen insensitivity syndrome? The patient presents with the general features like normal stature for age. Secondly, breast development is in tenor stage 5. There are no axillary hair development. When we examine the abdomen in patient with androgen insensitivity syndrome, usually a mass is felt in the groin, which are intra-abdominal testes that produces the high level of circulating testosterone. Secondly, there are no other abnormalities and the rectal examination is also normal. When we do the external genitalia examination in patient with AIS, we find out that these patients have got the female external genitalia with a variable vaginal hypoplasia and there are scanty pubic hairs of tenor stage 2 and usually there is intact annular hymen and no other abnormalities are detected. Let us talk about the clinical presentation of the patients with AIS. Patients of AIS presents with primary amenorrhea. The testis produces mullerian inhibiting factors or anti-mullerian hormone. No female internal structures are formed. Presentation is a spectrum from ambiguous genitalia to a normal male phenotype with infertility. Let us talk about the gender assignment in the patients with androgen insensitivity syndrome. For those cases identified in early infancy, assignment of the sex of rearing is difficult with no data concerning outcome. Fugal sexual function as male or female is unknown with the physical growth of genitalia being unpredictable and the lack of scientific knowledge about how sexual orientation and gender identity develops. It is likely that both male and female type behavior and gender identity are at least partly pre-programmed by a fetal sex steroid environment and in partial androgen insensitivity syndrome, the fetal sex steroid environment is unknown. What are the types of androgen insensitivity syndrome? Basically, we have two types, the complete AIS and the partial AIS. 
Let us talk a little bit about complete androgen insensitivity syndrome. In complete androgen insensitivity syndrome, no response to androgen occurs. The complete form of the syndrome occurs in as many as 1 in 20,000 live births. In complete AIS, the penis and other male body parts fail to develop. At birth, the child looks like a girl. A person with complete AIS appears to be female but has no uterus. They have very little armpits and pubic hairs. At puberty, the female sex characteristics such as the breast develops. However, the person doesn't menstruate and becomes fertile. Infertile. Let us talk about the partial AIS. In partial AIS, some response to androgen occurs. In partial AIS, people have different number of male traits. In partial AIS, people have different numbers of male traits. There is failure of one or both testes to descend into the scrotum of the bird. Hypospadia, a condition in which the opening of urethra is on undersurface of the penis, develops in such patients. The Fenstein syndrome, also called Gilbert, Dreyfus syndrome or Love syndrome is a part of partial AIS. Also, the infertile male syndrome is considered to be a part of partial AIS. Let us talk about the clinical presentation in patients with partial AIS. These patients may have a vagina but no cervix or uterus, inguinal hernia with a testis that can be felt during the physical examination. The normal female breasts and testis in the abdomen or other atypical places in the body. Now, what are the differences between complete AIS, partial AIS and 5-alpha reductase deficiency? You can see in the complete AIS, there are bilateral testes, female external genitalia, blind and vagina, infantile breast growth and the development of the breasts and sports pubic and axillary hairs. Whereas in partial AIS, there are bilateral testes, ambiguous genitalia. Okay, so in complete AIS, we have female external genitalia, in partial AIS, ambiguous genitalia. And in partial AIS, we have the uh, partial mescaline and the breast growth, development of the breast and sparse pubic and axillary hairs. In 5 alpha reductase deficiency, there are bilateral testes, female or ambiguous genitalia and the mescaline secondary sexual characteristics. Let us talk about the examination of the patients with androgen insensitivity syndrome. When we examine the patient with complete AIS, we find out that sometimes there are the growth is felt in the abdomen or groin that turns out to be uh, a testicle when it is explored with a surgery. And most people with these conditions are not diagnosed until they do not get a menstrual period or they have troubling getting pregnant. Next come the examination of the patient with the partial AIS. The partial AIS is often discovered during the childhood because the person may have both male and female physical traits. Let us discuss the investigations done in patients with AIS. The tests include first of all the different blood tests to check the level of testosterone, LH and FSH level. Secondly, the genetic typing or karyotyping are done in such patients to determine the person's genetic makeup and the pelvic ultrasounds are very important to, uh, to assess the internal genitalia. What are the possible complications in patients with AIS? These patients may present with infertility, psychological and social issues and testicular cancer. So how can we treat the patients with AIS? First of all, the psychosexual counseling is very important. Treatment and gender assignment can be a very complex issue and must be targeted to each individual person. Second, second is the uh, removal of the testes as there is a risk of neoplasia. Testicles that are in the wrong place may not be removed until a child finishes growing and goes through puberty. At this time, the testes may be removed because they can develop cancer just like an undescended testicles. And last come the roles of estrogen replacement that may be prescribed after puberty. So that was all about androgen insensitivity syndrome. I would like to complete my presentation with this quote. A tree has roots in the soil yet reaches to the sky. It tells us that in order to aspire we need to be grounded and that no matter how high we go 
it is from our roots that we draw sustenance it is a reminder to all of us who have had success that we cannot forget where we come from thank you so much wish you all the best allah hafiz